I have been every voice. You are the chosen one! I hate you! This is where the fun begins. Inside your head. Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Book of Boba Fett, Fennec Shand, The Bad Batch and more. As always guys before I dive into the news please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you have not done so already and also please make sure you give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post new content to the channel. You can expect daily Star Wars updates from me. So my dear Megalorians, without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. As I stated guys, we're going to be focusing on the Book of Boba Fett. Now there has been a new character leak and I will get to that in a minute, but first of all I want to talk about Crimson Dawn. So here's a brand new article which is why Crimson Dawn would make perfect villains for the Book of Boba. The galaxy's underworld is full of potential nemesis and none of them can be discounted as villains for the new series, but Crimson Dawn, the featured antagonist of Solo A Star Wars Story and the criminal organisation run by the former Darth Maul make ideal foils for Boba Fett's background. Crimson Dawn was born from a larger organisation, the Shadow Collective, which acted as Maul's cat's paw during the Clone Wars. The former Sith Lord used Crimson Dawn's leader, Dryden Voss, as a figurehead during the rise of the Empire. But both of them were dead by the time that Boba Fett seized Jabba's palace, as we saw in The Mandalorian Season 2. That left Crimson Dawn in limbo, but with strong story elements already in place and a very firm direction to go in, they should cross swords with Fett. The first reason is Crimson Dawn was invested in Tatooine. As depicted in Star Wars Rebels, Maul spent the final days of his life on Tatooine, searching for Obi-Wan Kenobi in order to act revenge. That strongly suggests that Crimson Dawn had a viable investment in Tatooine in order to help their kingpin in his quest. Maul was a certifiable enemy of the Empire at that point and probably didn't want to waste time manoeuvring past Imperial checkpoints or even dealing with Jabba the Hutt. Crimson Dawn was the ideal organisation to handle the logistical details, leaving Maul free to scour the desert in search of his nemesis. Furthermore, Maul had a keen interest in Han Solo as well as Kenobi. Solo belonged to Tobias Beckett's crew, whom the angry former Sith specifically targeted at the end of the movie. And the rebel to be was working for Jabba at the same time as Maul's arrival on Tatooine. That meant further Crimson Dawn attention devoted to the desert planet, and with both Jabba and Maul dead by the time Fett claimed power, that likely left the organisation with on-planet assets able to make a swift claim for Jabba's holdings. Under such circumstances, Fett could find himself becoming a target very quickly. The next thing to talk about is how Kira was very protective of Han Solo. Maul wasn't the only one with reason to hunt down Han. Boba Fett likely wanted to add the man who threw him into the Sarlacc pit to his list of kills. Han Solo was probably involved in the highest echelons of the Republic's government at the time of the Mandalorian, although that wouldn't have stopped someone like Boba Fett from pursuing him. Crimson Dawn, however, would have been a serious problem in that arena. With Maul dead, leadership almost fell certainly to Kira, who still housed feelings for Han at the end of Solo, and might even have been prepared to defy Maul in order to keep him safe. Uncontested control of Crimson Dawn most likely gave her the resources to intercede on his behalf, and it didn't take her long to ferret out both Boba Fett's new status as Jabba's successor and his past with her former lover. All of that places Crimson Dawn squarely at Boba Fett's doorstep on Tatooine, along with strong personal and professional motivation to stop his ascent before it continues. The crime syndicate provides strong ties to multiple important characters, along with a lot of plot threads left unresolved at the end of Solo, and it makes it a perfect fit for the Mandalorian spin-off. I think this article makes some really excellent points, but I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think we could see Crimson Torn in the Book of Boba Fett, and will it tie the show into the larger Star Wars universe? So with that said, let's move on to our next topic. We're still keeping with the theme of the Book of Boba because on the Star Wars leak subreddit yesterday, someone posted a big character leak. The post is titled, an old friend who lives in Los Angeles, not a huge Star Wars fan, told someone who told him that he was an extra in the Book of Boba Fett. He said that he was working for one of Boba Fett's rival bosses, Hammerhead. He said that his bits could possibly be cut, but I hadn't seen anything comparable to this anywhere and figured it might be interesting. So instantly this is really big news and it does make coherent sense. When you think of Hammerhead and Star Wars, you immediately think of the Athorian species and specifically one of them who was literally called Hammerhead in A New Hope. Mo Mal Nadon, also known as Hammerhead, was a male Ithorian who was exiled from his homeworld as punishment for revealing the agricultural secrets of his species to the Empire. We saw him at the Mos Eisley Cantina in A New Hope. Now, I can't confirm if they're referring to this specific Hammerhead or it's just an Ithorian villain in general, but I think this is very interesting if we do get the original Hammerhead. In a sense, it would make complete sense if it was the original Hammerhead, because I think Lucasfilm, knowing that the Book of Boba Fett is set on Tatooine, are going to want to provide us with a lot of fan service 
house. And this includes seeing the Mos Eisley Cantina and perhaps even some familiar faces like Hammerhead. But I'll leave this one for you to decide, guys. Do you think it's going to be the same Hammerhead that we saw in A New Hope? Or is Hammerhead just a nickname for a random Ithorian we haven't seen before? And so now, guys, we're going to be talking about Fennec Shand and her ties to the Bad Batch and also the Mandalorian universe in the Book of Boba Fett because she is going to be in both shows. This is from Inverse. Star Wars The Bad Batch could fix one huge Mandalorian plot hole. When Fennec Shan, set to appear in the Book of Boba Fett, shows up on the Bad Batch, she'll be 30 years younger than the woman we met in The Mandalorian. Aside from learning more about what Fennec Shan was like when she was younger, her inclusion in the Bad Batch can also help to clear up the muddled mess of how the Bounty Hunters Guild seemed to survive three massive government changes throughout the Star Wars saga. The first question they ask is, is bounty hunting legal in Star Wars? According to several canonical sources, the Bounty Hunters Guild was designed to regulate the legality of this particular profession, even though the larger governments changed all of the time. Apparently, the BHG worked alongside galactic governments and curated bounties for its members. For all the Star Wars casuals out there, the need for Mando or even Fennec Shan to be part of an outer space bounty hunter union scans as a retcon. In The Empire Strikes Back, when Vader hires Bosk, Boba, IG-88 and so on to track down the Millennium Falcon, you don't really get the sense that Vader found them on the bounty hunter version of Taskrabbit. You get the sense that Vader is badass and knows some shady people because he's the Dark Lord of the Sith. Plus, in the canonical special edition of episode 4, Boba Fett appears to be working for Jabba the Hutt, who is of course the criminal boss of the underworld of Tatooine. Seemingly by definition, bounty hunters in Star Wars are freelancers, but the Bounty Hunters Guild implies that they have some kind of freelance union to help them get work. That said, all of the visual evidence suggests that various bounty hunters operate outside of the law. For example, in episode 2 Attack of the Clones, nobody talks about calling up the Bounty Hunters Guild while Obi-Wan is looking for information on Jango Fett. In the prequels, Obi-Wan and others refer to Jango and his ilk as bounty hunters, but they really should be saying mercenaries or assassins. Presumably there is a bounty out on Padme Amidala in 22 BBY, but it's hard to imagine a government-sanctioned body like the BHG authorizing a legal bounty on a duly elected senator. The obvious answer to all of this is that sometimes bounty hunters operated within guild rules and sometimes they didn't. In The Mandalorian, we saw how hard it was for Mando to live off the grid. Assuming Fennec Shand in The Bad Batch is a bounty hunter, it will be interesting to see if she's part of the Bounty Hunters Guild during the events of the show. If she is, then we might get some insight into how the profession of bounty hunting evolved during the events of the Galactic Civil War. In theory, during the events of The Bad Batch, the control of the galaxy is in a very weird place. For generations, you had the Old Republic, but now, for about two decades, the Empire will reign supreme. How do bounty hunters and mercenaries fit into this? Does the Bounty Hunters Guild thrive under the Empire, or do we see some seeds here and there? that a lot of bounty hunters don't actually like it even if they can't do anything about it. So this dynamic will surely be explored in The Bad Batch. What counts as legal bounty hunting and what doesn't? So what do you guys make of all of this? Are you looking forward to The Bad Batch? Let me know all your thoughts from this news update in the comments down below. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, hit the bell and do all that good stuff down below. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.